For this particular hairstyle, we're going to go with a low two to three finger fade, a really tight fade. Uh, this client, his hair grows, it's very thick and it grows in a circle around his head. He likes to have his hair a little longer in front. He likes to push it up and back, but he likes to have a lot of texture. So we're going to use uh, some texturizing techniques. We're going to layer the top and cut it shorter. Um, as, I, as I spin him around, I want uh, you to take a close look around uh, the widest part of the head, the parietal area here. The hair wants to stick straight out. So we have a couple choices. One, which we're not going to do, is to cut it so short where it doesn't stick out or to leave it just barely long enough so it lays down. So we really don't have the option of the in-between length uh, for this gentleman. And as we, as we spin him around, you can see that he has uh, some of his crown area here it likes to stick up for this particular haircut it's okay because when we style it we're going to uh, we're going to dry it completely dry with a hair dryer and we're going to put in a, a very heavy um, uh, shaping paste and what that's going to do it's just going to add to the texture so if it doesn't lay down it's okay because it's going to balance with the rest of the top so um, it's kind of a side part, but we're not going to, we don't put a distinct part in it. We just kind of comb it all forward with our hands and it's all styled with our fingers instead of a brush as we push it back. So to start out, what I want to do is we're going to layer the top, but to leave the front longer, what I'm going to do is I'm going to over direct the top and I'm going to pull it back a little bit. So it'll take some of that front length out, but it's going to naturally leave it longer towards the front. So we're going to over direct that front and get our center section. So we're going to start out with our first guide, creating our first guide. And then that's be going, to, going to be our guide for our traveling guide. So we're going to pull the hair back each time. Very small sections so we don't create scissor marks. If our sections are too wide, we're going to create scissor marks. So if you feel like you're picking the hair up in the same spot each time, then your sections are small enough. We want to keep constant tension on the hair. So either with my finger as I'm pulling, as I'm pulling on the hair, so I have good tension, so I cut the hair even. And then when I grip the hair, the comb goes in at a 45 degree angle. I put a little pressure on the base of the comb. So we still have tension on the hair. We slide our fingers underneath and we do it again. And we do that all the way to the back. And then we want to make sure that we don't pull down too far and cut the back too short. It's okay if it pops up a little bit with the paste, but we don't want it too short sticking straight up. So now I'm going to comb the hair forward again. I'm going to locate my center guide and line it up with my middle knuckle. So there's our center guide. The reason why I'm lining it up with our middle, my middle knuckle is so I don't cut past my knuckle. Once you cut past your knuckle, then you're in danger of cutting your finger with the tip of the scissor. And I'm going to move that comb slow and we're going to take some thickness out of the hair. And I'm going to take the same sections as I did before. The reason why I'm using scissor over comb technique is because the hair is shorter and it's too hard to pick up or it's too hard to take as many sections if you were picking it up with your fingers. The slower you move the comb, the more weight you take out. The faster you move the comb, the less weight you take out. And then also, you can, uh, depending on how far down the shaft of the hair, you can control how much weight you take out that way too. Uh, for this particular hairstyle, this model likes more texture on the top. So what I do is I move the comb slow and I go about halfway down on the shaft of the hair. Are you a member of HowToCutHair.tv? Learn the art of men's barbering from third generation master barber Greg Zorian in full HD, 24 seven from anywhere in the world. Sign up for your free membership and learn how to increase your efficiency and make more money behind the chair. HowToCutHair.tv. So the hair is just too short to pick up with your fingers and it's impossible to take this many sections. So it's just much more accurate to use a scissor over comb technique. So what I'm doing is 
I'm taking an imaginary line straight up in the air until I meet this guide. And then when the guides meet, there's nothing left to cut. So if you can pay close attention to the comb, I have the comb angled in so it lifts the hair up and it makes it a lot easier at, towards the top. We can just make one pass right through. If I hold the comb this way and angle it out, it makes it very difficult and it pushes the hair. It doesn't feed into the comb properly and we're going to create scissor marks and clipper marks, which we don't want to do. We want to make this look nice and smooth. So when you're doing scissor over a comb, uh, this model has very straight hair. It has a lot of it, but it's fine. So you're going to wind up with a lot of scissor marks if you're not smooth with your comb. So that comb has to move very slow. And you want that, you want that uh, scissor opening and closing at a faster speed with the comb moving slow. And then that way you won't have to go back and do any, any blending in that area. Now, as we work our way towards the back, we're getting towards the crown. So we're going to want to start, instead of straight up in the air, we're going to want to start angling it out just a little bit to allow for the crown. Now, the other nice thing about having a bigger comb is I like to open the scissor pretty wide to generate enough force to cut the hair. So when you're using a bigger comb, the scissor is opening the width of the comb. Whereas if you had a smaller comb or if you're opening the scissors too wide, you're in danger of cutting into the comb or cutting behind, behind the comb like that and cutting into here. So that's uh, why I like to use a wider comb. So I'm just going to rotate the chair. I'm going to stand in one spot. And as I'm rotating the chair, I'm going to be checking the mirror to make sure that everything looks good. Now the technique that I'm using is I'm floating the blade away from the head. It's pretty simple. We just call it floating the blade. And as I do that, it's just kind of the same principle as I was doing with the comb, straight up in the air. And that way we're getting a nice blend. Now with the longer blades, if you, if you can see, take a close look at my wrist. My wrist is completely still, it does not move. If I do any of this and try to throw the hair off or any scooping motions, I'm gonna create, I'm gonna create a line of demarcation that has to be, a heavy line of demarcation that has to be blended out. And then we'll continue this through to the other side. So when we get to our shorter blades, the hair becomes thicker and more stubborn and we want to uh, go in a few different directions to make sure we grab all the hair and cut all the hair and we don't leave any stragglers. Okay, we bring that right to the temple area and make sure we don't go up too, too high. Now we're done with the quarter inch, we're going to use our eighth of an inch blade next, which is going to cut it even closer, but it's also our blending blade. So we're, it's going to, we're going to do two things with it. We're going to fade it down to the next length, and we're also going to touch up any areas around the parietal area here if we see any heavy spots. We're using a scooping motion with our shorter blade. So now if you look at my wrist, now the wrist is starting to move a little bit. So instead of just floating the blade with that fading motion, now we're in a smaller area, a two finger area. So now we have to start rotating our wrist or using a, a short flicking motion. And this is a little faster. And what this does is it fades it into the rest. Now our one and a half blade 
is a blending blade. Also, it cuts and blends. So when the heel of the blade is on the comb, it cuts. When the heel of the blade is at a 45 degree angle, it cuts and blends. And when we're at a 90 degree angle, we're just blending. It's like point cutting with 18 scissors. There's 18 clipper blades there, so it's just like point cutting. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use an underhand grip with my clipper, which means my hand is under the clipper. And I'm just going to run the, the tips of the teeth across a few times just to make sure that we're blended okay. And then I'm leaving myself just enough of a shadow so that when I come back with the uh, outliner or the trimmer, we're gonna get a nice sharp line there. Now as we work our way to the back of his hair, we're gonna bend his head down. I wanna make sure I keep the, the blade parallel to the floor and we're gonna use a, that same scooping motion but we're gonna go up a little bit higher because we're gonna use one more blade length. We're gonna close it down all the way to taper it right out to nothing. So I work my way all the way across. Then I close the blade halfway and I do it again, but I don't go as high. Making sure to keep my clipper pair, my clipper blade parallel to the floor because I don't want to round those corners. We want to keep those corners so we have a nice sharp diagonal line on both sides. Now I've closed the clipper down all the way. Now we have a nice tapered faded uh, neckline and our clipper did all the work. Introducing Zorian of New York, premium grooming products for the modern man, designed by third generation master barber, Greg Zorian. Made in the USA and not tested on animals, each of our styling products is infused with natural ingredients and features light, clean fragrances. Our two-in-one shampoo and conditioner is sulfate and paraben free and color safe. Do you own a barber shop or salon, rent a chair or run a school? Find out how we support our retailers with world-class barbering education and product knowledge training. We're currently accepting applications for wholesale accounts and invite you to apply on our website, Zorian of New York. For the style portion of the haircut, we have a lot of different options. Uh, in consulting with the client ahead of time, he likes a dry textured look, um, but other options we have, so we have, we can choose from a pomade, we could choose a, a cream, we can choose a paste, we could use a gel. But to get a, a matte finish with a lot of hold, we're gonna use our Zorian of New York shaping paste. Uh, so what this is, it's a, it's a very strong paste. It has a, a high hold, but no shine at all. So that's what he likes. That's what's gonna show off the texture. Um, it dries pretty quickly, so we wanna, we wanna get it in there. We wanna get it right down to the roots. Uh, some of the benefits of our shaping paste is that it doesn't clump up in your hands or your hair. It spreads very easily. It uh, has vitamin E in it, which is a powerful antioxidant, which helps to keep your hair healthy. Um, it also has uh, rosemary in it that inc increases the thickness and fullness uh, of the hair. So what we wanna do is we wanna take a, a decent amount. Okay, so about that much. And then you want to rub it through in your hands really good. So as I said, no clumps. We emulsify it really good in our hands. No clumping at all. We want to push down on the ends of the hair and in the back where the calic is. And then we want to come back through from the front and get it right down to the roots with your fingers. And then we're going to push it back forward again. And for this particular style, to get that textured look, instead of using a brush or a comb, we're going to do it all with our fingers. And then all, the, all along, you always have the product still in your hands. So you can kind of push it back this way. You can push it down on the sides. You also, because we rubbed it in good, it's on the tips of your fingers, so we can get it in good that way. And then we want to make sure that we get a little bit extra, especially in the front here, and just push it right up. And then you could always kind of push it back down a little bit and play with it a little bit. But you want to get enough product in the front of the hair and it'll stay up all day. 
So now we'll spin them around for you so you can get, you can get a nice view of the fade and how everything blends in together. We have the taper in the back. Okay, so now we have a nice uh, side part haircut uh, without a distinct part. We have a nice textured look on the top. We've used our Zorian of New York uh, shaping paste, which is going to hold all day, and it's going to really show off the texture in the haircut.